What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a fun one because we are finally going to get into the turbo kit for the Honda Element. In the previous video, you guys should have seen we did the Bull Boost Intake Manifold, the Fuel Rail and the Throttle Body Install and then we did the Walbro 450 Intake Fuel Pump. Let's go ahead and grab some of the parts on the floor and show you guys what we are rocking with. So you guys should have seen in the clutch installation video for the Honda Element, we revealed a little bit of the turbo kit. Unfortunately, none of that stuff is going to work because because of how small and tight the engine bay in the element is. My buddy SI ended up selling everything that he had originally bought for his build, but he did keep some of the items and one of it is this PSR GT35 turbo and uh, this this should be good to like six or 650 and it is a V-band style, which is gonna help a lot with like taking the turbo off and on the manifold. So this right here is gonna be his choice of turbo for the setup. This box right here, unopened, but let's go ahead and uh, show you guys what we have inside. Cut away from yourself, not towards yourself. This right here is a Tile MVR wastegate with a 0.6 bar spring, and it is also in red because they only had like two colors in stock. But I wanna give a big shout out to the homie Kelly built for getting this literally drop shipped to me and uh, have this pretty much for the build when time comes and the time is now. Did a fly just come out of the box? Or am I tripping? Little diagram of the wastegate itself. I don't remember getting one of these when I bought mine. Beautiful tile wastegate. The red looks really nice on here. I don't remember it being this dark, but uh, I like it. And you guys know, I don't really, it, this color is too bright for me, but it looks freaking awesome. It's got the firing ring on the inside. I wanna say the spring is already in here. We do have the banjo fittings for the vacuum lines. We have the fittings and block off for the water port and the vacuum port that we're not gonna use. We have the, V-band clamp, and I wanna say this is the flange that goes on a turbo manifold if you're building a custom turbo manifold. And then we also have the clamp and flange for the discharge of the dump tube. So, towel wastegate is what we're rocking with. Cut away from yourself, not toward yourself. I wanna give a big shout out to Just Tig, Juan Santiago from Arizona. This is the guy I kind of like talked about the Sidewinder adapter for the Rev9 cast manifold. And if you guys were interested, this was the go-to guy for it. Now, because we got rid of the other turbo kit, which was also utilizing Just Tig's manifold, um, I reached out to him to see if we can get another one on the way. And man, beautiful piece, beautiful piece. He was able to help us out and get a manifold made and sent out to us literally like a week and a half and usually it's between two to four weeks so big shout out to Juan for sending this manifold out to us ASAP and man this right here looks freaking awesome freaking awesome so we have the k-series head flange we have the v-band for the PSR turbo and also the v-band for the 44 millimeter wastegate this thing has literally wastegate priority Everything inside, nicely poured it out, super clean. Would recommend. So if you guys are interested, man, I'll put his Instagram in the description below if you guys are interested in something like this. I've seen this probably supported up to about 600 horsepower according to some of his customers. So this is definitely a lot of room for SI if you ever want to turn it up in his element. So let's go ahead and get into the engine bay, guys, and tear off that stock exhaust manifold. Okay, so. It doesn't seem like it's a tight knit back here at all. Heat shield, one, two, 12 mil shield comes off. Stock header off, but it turns out that the exhaust system itself, the downpipe that connects to the top half is actually welded as a one unit. So 
no flange, replacement cat, bars holding the cat into place, and one full exhaust system. So we're getting ready to put the log manifold on and I think I want to put the wastegate on now just so I don't struggle with um, trying to reach to the back of the engine bay. This is the discharge flange for again if you're welding onto a manifold like so but we're not going to be using that. Make sure you have the firing ring in the gate before installing it into the manifold. We're going to point the discharge backward because forward will be over the transmission backward will be towards the firewall and this doesn't have a big spring in it so we don't really have to like try to hold the gate down while trying to put the bolt through i should be able to just um you know crank it down with just clamping the clamp on now we're not going to fully tighten it down because we still need to kind of like angle the wastegate to figure out what's the best um position to put it in to make the dump tube so loose enough that I can still spin it around. Because this is a log top mount and you can see how far it comes out to the driver's side, it looks like we're gonna interfere with all of the, uh, I wanna say all these bracket trees or whatever this is, um, emission control stuff maybe. It looks like we're gonna have to remove all of that before we install the manifold. This looks like something to do with EVAP and it's already super loose. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of the way. I want to figure out what all these hoses and stuff uh, go to to know if we can remove it or not. Right now I'm not too worried about the engine harness or the fuel line because the fuel line we're going to change it when we go fuel pressure regulator. This one right here is for the booster to the intake manifold right there and I'm going to get some sleevings for the uh, heater hoses as well as the harness when I order all the fuel line stuff from BNR Fitting because that's normally where I get my uh, heat shielding from. So right now I just need it to be kind of cleared so that way I can put the manifold on and I think... I think we have the space now. Let's go ahead and get the manifold on. I am gonna use the stock header uh, gasket because I don't have another one and I am not gonna use the composite one either. Wow, this thing sits really low. Like really, really low. Looks like we're gonna have issues with the heater hoses. It's literally resting on it. Let me go ahead and brainstorm this real quick with the heater hoses and figure out a solution. Okay, guys, man, what a struggle. A struggle indeed, but not really a big deal. So with the heater hose, I had to take off one of the hose right here, which goes to the uh, side of the cylinder head. We have the turbo manifold fully secured down and the gasket is also in place. Now you guys probably saw I pulled out that bracket tree that was sitting here and I also took off one sensor with it. But these bracket tree right here, again, it's gonna change once we do the fuel line and reroute everything. But we got everything moved out enough that we can fit the manifold with the wastegate down low. Now with the heater situation, I had to pull one hose off right here and it looks like I'm gonna have to get one of those billet adapters for the side of the cylinder head so we can swivel the port down underneath the wastegate so if you look at this one right here this hose i had to bend the bracket which you can see is off right now to allow me to point the um pipe underneath the wastegate this one is connected and it does have like half an inch between the wastegate and we are going to heat sleeve it as well too but as far as this one goes billet adapter swivel it down aim it underneath the wastegate heat sleeve it and hopefully uh, this one fits without having to buy a new hose, but if I had to, not a big deal. With the manifold installed, it looks like I have a lot of space for a downpipe and a dump tube. Doesn't look like I'm going to have to move the power steering hose at all. And uh, I am going to kind of take off the harness from the plastic loom right here. And also this one here to kind of give me a little bit more slack so that way I could pull the harness all the way out so it's not like kind of sitting around the turbo area. Um, aside from that, I think um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and mock up the turbo itself and kind of see how it fits with everything back here. And with how close everything is gonna be, I'm gonna recommend him to buy a turbo blanket as well. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, man. That sunset blinding me is getting really annoying. But I cut the uh, tubing that goes on the side of the valve cover. I split the tube because we're not using this one anymore and it's just bulky sitting there, not doing anything. So this right here, I'm just gonna toss it in the box, you know, just in case ever this thing needs to go back to factory. But um, this tube right here is for the brake booster to intake manifold right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna space it out. So let me show you guys here really quickly. If I if I lay this bracket flat against the valve cover, right? This is actually right in front of the exhaust housing and you probably can't put a turbo blanket in it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna space it out like this. So that way we can have the space back there to put a turbo blanket on and still obviously run the vacuum line right there. So let me go find some spacers and make do with that. It look like you on vacation, bro. <laughs> you on vacation or what? Man, I'm gonna sell these only feet content right here, bro. Sheesh. <laughs> Man, my boy at work. Look at this. Production welding, baby. Look at that. Look at that. Sheesh. All right, which one of you guys from Florida owned this RX-7, man? This thing is fire, bro. Right hand drive out here at Kelly Belt getting some fab work done. Look at this beautifulness right here. Got some material coming out from Australia, tight bend uh, 45, getting some charge pipe work, some intake work, some bracketry and all that. And this RX-7 is ready to rock and roll. This thing goes hard. Sheesh. I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but uh, I broke my welding machine a couple of days ago. So big shout out to the homie Kel, cause he is lending me his spare machine. This is your tacking machine, right? Yeah, this is tacking machine so you don't have to walk back and forth between workstations to workstation. So I'm going to use this for now to tack and if I feel like I'll fully weld, but obviously I'm going to fully weld anyways, but more so if I'm going to show it to you guys or not. So I'm going to go ahead and just load this up and grab some material before we head back home to do some more work on the element. want to give a big shout out to Brian for being our fittings for getting me all the fittings that I needed and also actually delivering it today because he was in town. So here we have all the PTFE. There's like eight foot of this because we're going to be building a return system for the fuel and everything I need here for the rail, the filter and the fuel pressure regulator. We're going to save all this for a different video. So I'm going to go ahead and just put all this away real quick. And once more, big shout out to the homie Kel for all the fabrication material I'm gonna need to make the downpipe and the dump tube. This is four foot of three inch tubing, stainless steel. We have a V-band clamp set for the downpipe to the exhaust. We also have the V-band and clamp for the turbo itself right there. 
we have a bellow for the flexibility of the downpipe we have a 90 cut into 45 just so i can have uh these bends in case i need them we have a 90 there this right here is a 90 um one and three quarter this is for the 44 millimeter dump tube which i'm going to cut in half for 245 and then we have a straight there and we also have another foot of that uh in my bin over here somewhere so we're gonna get down with the fabrication, guys. I'm not gonna show you every aspect of it. I just really want to mock it all up, whether I tack it in or fully weld it up. I just want to get it done because uh, this is gonna be a little more harder because of, of having to lean all the way back over here. So let's get to it. I was test fitting some of the pipings I had lying around before actually getting into the cutting to get the angles and stuff that I need. With the long 90, this little short six inch straight and this 45 right here taped together. Um, this is pretty much gonna make the top half of the downpipe. Now I'm not making this downpipe two piece, which is typically how K series are because there's a lot of room down there to snake a whole downpipe through. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's literally pointing backwards and towards the floor. So it looks like all I need right here is a straight and a 45 to point backward. I might I might put the flex or the bellow somewhere here before exiting past the subframe. So let me go ahead and tinker with it a little bit more and see what I come up with. Or I should set up the TIG welding machine so I can tack it into place and not have this drop straight to the floor. Kill myself. The fact that I can snake the entire downpipe from the top, it's freaking awesome. Look at that. So I have the downpipe fully tacked up and it is mocked up in a place right now. I need it to be in place so I can figure out what I'm gonna do with the wastegate dump tube. Um, I thought I bought two of these, but um, I only have 190 and I have uh, this straight here. And I have some more straight inside the garage, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna need the 90 or a 45 off the gate itself, but I'm gonna go ahead and just crawl underneath the car real quick because uh, the life struggles. What's up, Hades? Oh, Herb's here as well, too. What up, guys? <laughs> here we go. Yeah. So we have a V band on the end of the downpipe. It's pretty straight. Let me try to straighten out my hand real quick it's pretty straight and that's gonna go to the exhaust uh, later day once we finish everything underneath the hood but we got the downpipe in place and you can see over there is the wastegate so I'm going 90 off the gate and dump right over here where uh, the half shaft will be at the intermediate shaft or I can cut this into 45 and point it more straight towards where the downpipe is headed and kind of dump it right here next to uh, the downpipe. Um, but I don't know if I want the dump tube to kind of be free floating that far out, um, but it's not gonna make any difference if I did a 90 off and then straight this way. So let me, let me figure something out and show you guys what I come up with. So after crawling underneath the car about a thousand times, getting a lot of dirt in my face about a thousand times, um, this is the dump tube we kind of came up with and I think this will work I'm crossing fingers that after I tacked everything up I hope that I got them all tacked up in the right spot I did leave some marks just so I can use them as reference to position them accordingly and I hope this is a one-time shot man it's looking good yeah it's looking I mean it's looking yeah it's looking thank you thank you I appreciate that mm -hmm. um but yeah so I'm gonna test fit it right now to make sure this is aimed where I need it to go then we'll pull it out and fully weld it up hopefully this is 
the second to last time I crawl underneath here. Oh, look at that. Right here. Let me turn around. Let me turn around. Okay. So, hopefully you guys can see this, but... Uh, flashlight. So, we got the wastegate. Uh, you can't even see it. So, wastegate. 90 degrees off the wastegate. Coming straight down here. Two pie cuts, which I should have had a 45, but I don't. So, pie cut. And straight down to the floor. And it clears everything. Transfer case. Clears intermediate shaft. And nothing is touching up there. Heater hose will get uh, heat um, sleeving to prevent it from being too hot. Dump tube and downpipe will be wrapped as well too to kind of contain the heat. Downpipe right there. Going back here between the, the subframe and then exits right out the back with the V-band. And now I'm going to put everything out, clean up, weld this up, throw it in the car. And I think that'll be it for this video. Let's get to it. Ugh. It is almost 12 o'clock and it took me an hour and 20 minutes to weld this downpipe and dump tube up. And I must say, I think this is probably one of the best welds I've ever done. And it's on a machine that's not even mine. <laughs> Big shout out to Kel for lending me his spare machine. It's an Eastwood Take 200. We're still going to figure out if we can do aluminum. I'm sure we can. The AC is there, but there's really not a lot of adjustments for like uh, frequency and stuff like that but we're gonna use this machine when we do the aluminum piping of the build but big shout out to kill for that because we we laid down some really nice beads on this downpipe looks freaking awesome i did scotch bright the downpipe and dump tube with a um gray scuff pad and it turned out freaking awesome this is the dump tube. I had it mounted up to the wastegate so it doesn't warp the flange because I was um, kind of burning in the 80 because this one is on the um, foot pedal and Kel was saying that on the foot pedal has its own adjustment. So um, it's like 60 right now, but I'm burning at like, you know, 35, 40 maybe, but I'm really just watching it and controlling it by the foot. The welds came out freaking awesome. Um, I can't show you all of it, but you know, just just know that I'm I'm stoked about this one most definitely and the uh, O2 sensor bung is also in place I've almost forgot about it but um, I got that welded on and that's pretty much it for the hot parts down pipe three inch to a v-band dump tube uh, open atmosphere we're not obviously going to research this because one it sounds funkadelic and two we don't want to rob any power because k24a4 so we're just trying to make as much as we can on it and you know be happy with um the results so i think i'm going to wrap up the video all i really wanted to do was the hot parts obviously and then um i'm not sure what's next i don't know if we're going to do the intercooler or if we're going to do the fuel system but um just know that we're going to be steady making progress on the element because this this is motivating big shout out to just tig for the log top mount if you guys are interested be sure to hit him up on instagram and i believe he's uh juan santiago on facebook as well too and uh shout out to kelly built for the wastegate and 
for all of the fabrication components. But we are going to wrap up the video right here. If you guys enjoyed this progress update on the Turbo Element build, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for more progress update on the Turbo Element build, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.